Hey guys, this is Gabriel Lorenzi, creator of the blog Grupo Dicas, one of the biggest travel blogs in the world. And today I'm here to tell you where to stay in Madrid, what's the best region of the city, what's the best location, how to stay close to all the sites, how each neighborhood works, what is the style of each one. In short, all the tips and quick, useful and not boring tips. So enjoy the video guys, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to the channel here because that helps us a lot and that's it, buckle up. Well, Madrid is one of the biggest cities in Europe, it's a big city, but the good news is that it's kind of easy even for you to identify where is the best place for you to stay. Unlike some other cities that have many regions, Paris for example has many nice regions to stay in, it's a little bit more difficult. Now in Madrid, however big the city is and it has more than 130 neighborhoods if I'm not mistaken, you have the tourist part which is very centralized. There's a central region of the city where where practically 90% of the tourist attractions that you will visit during your trip are centralized. So it's a pretty easy decision. You don't have to think too much about where to stay. It's actually easy. So the first question is where to stay in Madrid in the center? It sounds kind of obvious, but it's the center really. The tourist center is center zero of the city. I'll even leave the map here on the screen. This same custom map that we made here, I'll leave the link here in the description of the video. If you click on it, it will open inside a hotel search engine, which is the biggest in the world, I'm sure you know it. And this area is already customized there. If you stay within this delimited area, you will be practicing close to all the sides of Madrid. Most things you will be able to do on foot and what you can't do on foot you can do on the subway. The Madrid subway is very good, it's one of the biggest in the world in terms of number of lines and stations so you can, yes, transport yourself in a very easy way around the city. Madrid is a city that does not need a car unless you have a car because you have made a long trip in Spain, Portugal, Spain, many people do. If you don't have a car you don't need one, you can get well located in this region you can easily get around by subway so the tip is if you locate yourself on the map of Madrid focus on Puerta del Sol Puerta del Sol which is the main square in Madrid that's where it marks that their landmark zero which is right in the center there is the main tourist attraction of the whole trip so you can have the Puerta del Sol there is a lot of cool things you're going to do near there it's the best location it's a good place to start and from there you go to everywhere else. The two most important sites of the city are also there, which are the Royal Palace and the Playa Mayor, which is the super famous square, so you will stay there a lot. It's a nice place to walk around, so the tip is try to stay as close to this square as possible. You will see that there is a region around it, which we mentioned here, which we show you on this map. You can move a little bit away because in Madrid you can get around by subway or by foot. It's super nice to walk, but try not to get away from it so much. If you go far away, you have cheaper hotel options, so if you see a very good, very cheap hotel, it might be a good opportunity, even if it's a little bit further away. But try to stay within this delimited area, so that you don't get so far away from this more touristy area, that's the most important area for you to stay. And being very honest, any place you stay there is going to be nice. It's a nice, safe, good area. But for those who want to go a little deeper, there are some neighborhoods that we think are nice to highlight. Within this region, there are some different neighborhoods, different regions. Some of them stand out because they have a very different profile. For example, the Salamanca region, which is a little bit further away from the center, above the park. You will see that the park is huge. The Retiro Park, you can see it from far away on the map it stands out, so Salamanca is a little bit higher up, it's a more chic, noble area of the city, it's where the main designer stores are, these trees that have all these stores, Prada, Gucci, it's more for a travel style of people who look for this kind of trip, which is a little more chic, more refined places, boutiques, cafes, things like that, it has that European vibe, that European chic that people like a lot. 
Oh, and people, quickly, if you have any questions about traveling, you can send them to us and we'll help you. If you prefer, add me there, at Pylorenzi on Instagram, send me a direct message with any doubts and I'll help you. And take the time to follow us there, because we're always traveling the world trying to show travel tips in a very cool way and the family routine with our little ones, who are a blast. And we are leaving Orlando now, this study is in our new house in Orlando. We have been here for a few months now and we are showing you everything how is life here in the United States, the amusement parks, Disney, shopping, clothes, food, you name it, everything. So the content, it's pretty cool. And now going down a little bit from Salamanca and coming a little closer to the central region in a good location. There is the Shueca area. I don't know if it is exactly how it's pronounced. It's Shueca, a fashionable neighborhood. They say it's the fashion district, the art district, and it's very frequented by the LGBT public. So they focus a lot there. The people who travel there who are LGBT people end up wanting to stay there. It's a region that gets a little bit busy at night. There are a lot of little bars, clubs, sports. It's a very lively region too, so it's another option that's well located. Shrek's location is very good. And another area that stands out a little bit that many people sometimes want to stay there is the Gran Via area. The Gran Via is the main street in Madrid, which has a lot of stores, department stores, all the brands you know, a lot of restaurants, cafes. So it's a very busy area, very touristy. There are many hotels there. So if your intention is to shop, visit stores, restaurants, cafes, a little bit more lively, this area of Gran Via is very nice, a very nice avenue to stay on and there are plenty of hotels hotels there to stay and enjoy. And there are many neighborhoods, but I think it's more than enough for you to stay. You don't worry so much about the neighborhood. You go more for the central location, which in our opinion was that made the most difference. If you stay in the middle of the center, you will be close to everything. And the tip, try to get a hotel that's close to the subway because we use the subway a lot to get around and to some tourist attractions that are a little bit further away. But almost anywhere in the center, you will be close to a subway station because there are many subway stations scattered there. So this this will not be a problem. Of course, if you choose a hotel, you will see that there will be a subway station located close by or just a few blocks away. So just pay attention, be close to the subway. Oh, and people, now the tip for you to save money on accommodation. I'll leave this personalized map here in the description of the video. You click on it, it will open. You close it, enter the date of your lodging in the search engine, set it to search, and then set it to open the map again. It will open the same map with the hotels already on the date of your trip, with the prices, availability, everything, and some filters that we already set, that is guest ratings from 8 to 10 to show only well-rated hotels. It's not an expensive hotel, it's a well-rated hotel to remove move from the list those hotels that are sometimes dirty that have bad services so this helps a lot so we left everything ready ready to go so that the person can do the research so do some research see if there are any good hotels and the golden tip to save money especially in Madrid which is a very touristy place is to book in advance the sooner you make your reservation the cheaper you will pay at the hotel and the tip the search engine that we use I like it a lot we use it a lot because besides being the largest hotel search engine in the world it has a very good negotiation with the hotels for free cancellation so you enter see a good price because Madrid is anywhere any tourist city in Europe in the world you see that in a few weeks that you wait prices skyrocket they go up very fast so you went in you like it you saw a good price make a reservation secure that price then if you need to change hotel or region or even cancel it's a click there's no bureaucracy at all you don't spend anything and cancellation is free so we use this site a lot this search engine to be able to to use this strategy of doing it as early as possible if we need to we can cancel later but it guarantees the best price because price go up very fast and many people ask which hotel do you recommend where did you stay i'll also leave the link all organized and ready to go in the description of the video along with all the other links or things we use in our trip the websites where we get the travel insurance which is mandatory don't stop for the love of god to make your travel insurance because it's mandatory for europe you have to have an insurance of at least thirty thousand euros of medical assistance coverage but it's very cheap don't worry insurance like this is very cheap it's very affordable even more using the price comparator that i'll leave here below it compares all the insurance companies and shows you the cheapest insurance at the best insurance company so in five minutes you can search guarantee the best price because the prices are unbeatable i go there because it's really good and cheap it's the cheapest place of all take a look print it out take the policy with you and that's it but 
don't forget the travel insurance because it's mandatory for all Europe. And continuing about the hotel we stayed at, I'll leave it here in the description of the video. It's a very good hotel, the price is good, the location is excellent, it's close to everything, it's right in the central area that we talked about, the service is good, the food is good, the room was very good, clean, spacious. Anyway, we only have good things to say about this hotel. So we really recommend it when we stay in a place we like. I'll leave it here in the description of the video have a look see how much the price is at the time you're going see if it's worth it or not and then you decide Another tip, people, speaking of the season, this influences a lot. Madrid, in the months of June, July and August, which are the European summer, you will pay a little bit more. The city is much more crowded, things are more expensive. If you travel in the fall, spring or even in the winter, which is December and January, the prices go down a lot. So check the season too, because it has a big influence on the prices of all the hotels. And here in the description of the video, I'll leave everything organized, all the links that I mentioned it. I will also leave the cell phone chip. It's the best chip for you to use your cell phone abroad. It works in the whole Europe, regardless of the country you're going to visit or not. If you go to three or four countries on the same trip, it's the same chip. See why it's very good. It's signal worked perfectly. The service is good. They send a digital chip to your email very quickly. This is an option available for some new cell phone models. It's the eSIM. So you will see that they have eSIM on the site which is even cheaper it's an electronic chip you put it on your cell phone you install it so you don't even need to receive the plastic chip it's cheaper there's no shipping and it's much faster take a look if your cell phone already works or not but anyway it's super simple to use and also the train comparator so you can see the best routes and buy train tickets for Europe because the train is very good in Europe use the train compare with the plane tickets because sometimes they are a little bit more expensive there's also an airline ticket comparator I'm going to make it very clear in the description of the video in the description you will see a guide for you to set up practically your entire trip that's it guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you like it please give us a like and subscribe to the channel that really helps us and don't forget to watch the other videos there's the video about what to do in Madrid which is very good there's one about how to set up your whole trip to Spain there are videos from Barcelona there are videos from the Balearic Islands which are beautiful they're in Spain Ibiza Mallorca Menorca Formentera I'll leave the playlist that has all of them here for you to watch so that's it guys thank you very much and have a nice